Item number SCP-2385 Object Class Keter Previously Euclid Special Containment Procedures Observation Site 2385 has been established around the anomaly, and the quarry in which it was discovered has been purchased by the Foundation. An antechamber has been constructed around SCP-2385's entrance. Entry into SCP-2385 beyond the first ten meters is prohibited. Instances of SCP-2385-1 that either stray towards or are berthed near the entryway are to be lured into the antechamber. Specimen of Mus Musculus are to be utilized for this purpose. The instance is to be tranquilized and relocated to a containment pen. SCP-2385 is a subterranean network composed of undifferentiated human tissue. The matter is bioluminescent, emitting a constant 0.003 lumen. The tunnels that make up the structure wind and interlock, forming a multi-cursural maze. SCP-2385 has a single entrance point. Attempts to either access or assess SCP-2385 from the outside, via tunneling and ground-penetrating radar respectively, have been met with failure. Due to this, the true size of SCP-2385 is unknown. Mapping of the interior has also proven difficult, as its internal topography fluctuates sporadically. New paths will open in the walls, while other sections will close off. SCP-2385-1 and Dash-2 are vermiform lifeforms, which periodically grow within SCP-2385. SCP-2385-1 and Dash-2 specimens typically range between 1 and 4 meters in length, with an average weight of 250 kilograms. They possess humanoid heads, which are connected to a muscular tail by a fatty midsection. SCP-2385-1 will violently assault anything they perceive to move, including each other. SCP-2385-1 will constrict incapacitated prey prior to consuming smaller organisms, and other SCP-2385-1 whole. SCP-2385-1 will attempt to penetrate larger prey and consume them from within. A pair of pharyngeal jaws is used to manipulate prey items into the gullet. Instances will wander SCP-2385 with no apparent direction and seem to be solely motivated by hunger. Research on specimens in captivity have revealed that they do not require sustenance, so the reason for this behavior is unknown. SCP-2385-2 instances are typically larger than their Dash-1 counterparts, and are identifiable by a fibrous growth over their eyes. SCP-2385-2 are completely docile and have never been observed feeding. They will converge with one another and seem to travel through SCP-2385 with intent. Expiration SCP-2385-1 October 1, 2003 D-02894 was selected to ascertain the function of the anomaly and to determine whether manned explorations were feasible. D-02894 was equipped with a shoulder-mounted camera, one week supply of rations, one Ruger LC-9, as well as several reserve magazines, a machete. Very little information was gleaned, as D-02894 was struck by an instance of SCP-2385-1 and lost his camera ten minutes into the exploration. Contact was lost, and D-02894 was presumed dead. Exploration SCP-2385-2 December 21, 2003 Forward. A remote-controlled drone, A-47, was sent into SCP-2385. Initial exploration video log transcript. Begin log. One minute. The camera shakes as A-47 navigates the terrain. After ten meters, the path spirals clockwise, leading to an intersection. To the left, four SCP-2385-1 are engaging each other in combat, while another two lie motionless. A-47 is directed down the right path. Eight minutes. A-47 continues down the path, which at this point should place the drone back within Observational Site-2385. Over a dozen unborn SCP-2385-1 and Dash-2 are growing throughout this hall. See attached photo. An A-47 is maneuvered around them. Nineteen minutes. An instance of SCP-2385-1 is laying to the side of the tunnel, and is ingesting another instance. It lashes out when the drone draws near, but cannot fully ambulate due to its feeding. 24 minutes. 
Three fighting SCP-2385-1 block further progress. A-47 directed the turn around. The path A-47 had been traveling down can be seen to end abruptly. With no further options, A-47 continues towards the instances. 26 minutes. The largest of the instances is killed. Its head and tail are swallowed by the remaining SCP-2385-1, which begin to manipulate it down their throats. A-47 is able to continue unimpeded. 29 minutes. An SCP-2385-1 instance, which had been spotted from afar growing from the ceiling, detaches as A-47 passes beneath it. The instance attacks A-47, rendering it immobile after several strikes. 31 minutes. The instance wraps around A-47 and attempts to consume it. 43 minutes. The instant gives up and leaves the area. 9 hours 32 minutes. The wall to A-47's left opens up, and two SCP-2385-2 exit. One instance approaches A-47, while the other one prods the wall to the right, which opens as well. D-02894 emerges from the tunnel to A-47's left, brandishing his machete. Both instances exit through the new tunnel, followed by D-02894. 10 hours, 3 minutes. A-47 runs out of battery. End log. Exploration SCP-2385-3 February 6, 2004 Forward, an SCP-2385-2 specimen was taken from Foundation captivity, henceforth Subject Alpha, and anesthetized. After a micro-camera was surgically implanted, SA was placed within SCP-2385. 5 minutes to 21 minutes. SA wakes up and looks around before heading straight. It traverses SCP-2385 uneventfully for a few minutes before coming across an open area filled with fetal SCP-2385-1 instances. SA stops at several, and can be seen rubbing its face against theirs. One instance thrashes and snaps at SA, though the bulk of its mass is still embedded within SCP-2385, restricting its movements. 39 minutes to 45 minutes. The path splits out into three different tunnels. SA selects a path and tries to continue, though it is apparently frightened by two SCP-2385-1 instances engaging in combat. Another can be briefly seen attempting to feed on a fetal instance growing from the ground. SA flees and selects another path. 1 hour 47 minutes. A nearby wall opens up and two SCP-2385-2 instances exit. Dash 2B, Dash 2C, and begin to travel the way SA came from. SA follows suit. 3 hours 22 minutes to 5 hours 31 minutes. The group encounters a lone SCP-2385-1, which attacks Dash 2C. Dash 2B wraps around and physically restrains it. For the next two hours, the group takes turns nuzzling the SCP-2385-1 instance. Notably, it develops the fibrous growth characteristics of SCP-2385-2 instances over its eyes. Afterwards, it is released and becomes docile, hence Force 2D. 5 hours 33 minutes to 12 hours 42 minutes. The group continues through SCP-2385. At various points, they are observed prodding the walls of SCP-2385 to produce new paths. At 11 hours 15 minutes, SCP-2385 shifts and encloses the group. Dash 2D and Dash 2B feel about the walls, eventually producing an alternate route. At this point, they confront an SCP-2385-1 instance, blocking further progress. Dash 2B and Dash 2C are observed to nuzzle each other, prior to Dash 2B charging the SCP-2385-1 instance. The group crawl over and around the instance as it consumes Dash 2B. Dash 2C remains behind. 27 hours 21 minutes. Dash 2B is ambushed from a side tunnel. The larger instance drags it around the bend and out of sight, and the opening seals shut. 33 hours 57 minutes to 34 hours and 18 minutes. SA encounters an SCP-2385-1 instance, which chases it throughout SCP-2385. SA selects a path which terminates after several meters, trapping it. SA does not defend itself as the instance attacks and subdues SA, and begins to feed on it. At 34 hours 11 minutes, a male voice can be heard shouting, prior to D-02894 coming into view. He kills the instance with machete, and kneels down next to SA. 
Hey there, little guy. You alright? D-02894 leans in and pets S.A. Yeah, you're fine. Get up. I know where it is. Come with me. 34 hours 19 minutes to 34 hours 41 minutes. D-02894 leads S.A. through the area, stopping at one point to carve a piece out of SCP-2385, which he consumes. 34 hours 43 minutes. The path opens up into a large room with a bright luminescent sphere levitating a meter off the ground, estimated to be about 10 meters in diameter. Here we are. D-02894 walks over to the sphere and places a hand on it. You ready? 34 hours 44 minutes. SA approaches D-02894. It alternates between looking the sphere and the path they came down. It's alright. They'll come back. They always do. Come on now. D-02894 beckons towards the sphere. 34 hours 46 minutes. SA prods the sphere and pushes its way inside. 34 hours 47 minutes. Unknown. Personnel that viewed the live feed were found to be incapable of describing what they witnessed. Subsequent playbacks terminate at 34 hours and 46 minutes. Addendum SCP-2385-A On the day of Expiration 3's conclusion, Maya of Elgin, Illinois was admitted to the local hospital, complaining of abdominal pains and suffering vaginal bleeding. An emergency surgery was performed upon the discovery of a foreign object lodged within her uterus, which was found to be a micro-camera. Agent Nakamura was dispatched to investigate. Nakamura was able to confirm that the item's serial number matched the one implanted within SA, and confiscated it. Multiple articles covering the event in hyperbole were issued through Foundation-owned Bizarre News publications. Object reclassed as Keter.